Hi, good morning, everybody. I'd like to, if I may, tell you a story. Your story begins on protest day. You raise your fist and lead the crowd in a chant. Something true, a, a truth ignited, if you will. And as Gary Kasparov told us last night, because it's true, it poses a danger to those in power. Now, while you may have the truth on your side, you know, as we all know, that those in power who are threatened by these truths have something just as powerful on theirs, surveillance technology. And sure enough, an agent of the state has seen you and wants to figure out who you are. But you've taken precautions. You wear a face mask. You use an encrypted messaging app. And when you leave the protest, you take a long, meandering route, just in case you're being followed. But you're being followed all the same. Not by a human or a, a drone or any other one single physical surveillance device. You're being followed by software. And trust me when I say this, that is much, much worse. Here's how it works. The agent pulls up the software and finds that initial image of you and clicks a button marked investigate. And using some fairly simple computer vision, the, the system essentially finds the most distinctive features in your image, particularly that uh, very uh, lovely pink shirt, and cross-references it against all of the other surveillance camera feeds in the city, looking for matches. In this way, it essentially tracks your every move as you come into view of one surveillance camera and then the next, generating a perfect map of your route, your own digital trail of breadcrumbs. But you didn't go home. You're obviously smarter than that. You went to the house of a friend, someone sympathetic to the cause. But the agent obviously isn't finished either. And with one more click of the uh, investigate button, uh, the, uh, the system using that home address where you ended up brings up your friend's profile, his name, all of his details, and a heat map showing all of the places in the city where he spends most time. Your friend's digital trail of breadcrumbs. Another click of the investigate button brings up all of the people who live at those places, who has a criminal record, maybe who's been named in the same criminal complaint as your friend, uh, anyone he's interacted with on social media. And you can be sure that he'll probably be receiving a visit from some very unwelcome guests not too long from now. But the agent's after you. And with one more click of the investigate button, using that same basic computer vision, the system cross-references that initial image of you at the protest to all of the images that are available for all of the people that are in your friend's network. You are, of course, one of those people. And in a few seconds, it finds a match. And there you are. Your profile comes up. All your personal details, your social media history, your criminal record if you have one, your own heat map showing all of the places where you spend most time, going back years of your life. 
a list of all of your associates, the whole movement laid bare. And on top of all that, a predictive risk score, indicating your likelihood of committing a crime sometime in the near future. A score that in this case is high enough to serve as the basis for a search warrant on your home. The agent has you. It only took a few minutes and four clicks of the investigate button. Click, 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 click. Later that evening, you're back home. Because you took every possible precaution, you feel like you're finally safe. And then you hear a sound that nobody wants to hear at their door in the middle of the night. Knock, 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 knock. Now, in case you're wondering, this is not the plot line of some fictional Hollywood thriller like Enemy of the State, although I highly encourage you to watch that film. This technology that I have described is absolutely real. It often goes by the innocuous name of multi-intelligence fusion. It is proliferating rapidly across the globe, often in the guise of smart city modernization efforts sold by companies like Microsoft, Oracle, NEC, Palantir, and Genetech. Now, the story that these companies want us to hear is about how this technology can be used to, I don't know, find a child who is being kidnapped. That's certainly the story they always tell me. But today I wanted to tell you a different story. A story that is, in all likelihood, all the more plausible and just as important. In telling you this story, I promise I have not exaggerated. This technology is extraordinarily powerful. In New York City, for example, the NYPD's surveillance fusion system, DAS, has in recent years contributed to more criminal charges than any other single device in that city's vast surveillance arsenal. In China, surveillance fusion is the cornerstone of the government's campaign to surveil 100% of public space and 100% of its citizens 24 hours a day. As I understand it, the fine city of Miami also has some of these technologies in its real-time crime centers. And yet, unlike the traditional weapons of authoritarianism with which we are all too well familiar, surveillance fusion doesn't rely on any of the old, the old techniques, the stakeouts outside your home, the networks of informants, the wiretaps on your phone. It works by bringing together all of the information that is already freely available about us. The digital breadcrumbs that we leave behind simply by existing in the modern world. Those heat maps, for example, are built using commercially available cell phone location data. Data that anybody, even you or I, can buy on the open market. The algorithms at the heart of this software that correlate all of these disparate data points, tracking us from one data set to the other, are largely derived from the same algorithms that are used to track us online for digital marketing to serve us ads. And in telling you this story, I've only shared a sample of what this technology is capable of when it brings all of that information together. As you can imagine, it is shrouded in secrecy, but the little that we do know about it is very troubling 
terrifying, if you will. And you can be certain that there is a lot more going on behind that thick veil of secrecy. You can also be certain, and trust me, you do not have to be an expert to see this, that it is going to get a lot more powerful in the years ahead. As every new source of data comes online and inevitably gets plugged into the system, as every new algorithm is developed to track us across these data points with increasing persistence, relentlessness, and intrusiveness. At this point, I can imagine what some of you in the audience are probably thinking right now. Oh, shit. <laughs> but the existence of technologies like this is why we fight to protect those last small remaining sacrosanct spaces of privacy where the seeds of liberty and freedom can only germinate. After all, we raise our fist not because nobody is watching. We raise it in spite of the fact that we know someone is always watching, man or machine following us everywhere we go. And we're never going to stop doing that. We're never going to stop. We're going to keep going. It's in our nature. We have no choice. But I might suggest maybe next time wear a different colored shirt. Thank you so much.